Vanilla scents are everywhere in soap making, but there's one ingredient in them that soap makers hate. Vanilla. You know, that annoying little fiend that turns soap brown? Today, I'm putting actual pure vanillin to the test, and by the end of this video, you'll see exactly how much damage it does, and whether it's even possible to stop it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. If you're new to soap making, here's the TLDR. Vanillin is one of the few molecules that gives vanilla its delectable flavor and aroma. However, it oxidizes and turns brown very easily. That's why most reputable soap fragrance suppliers will state how much vanillin is in a certain fragrance so the soap maker can gauge whether the discoloration is something they want to risk or not. Vanilla fragrances will usually contain anywhere between 5 to 30% vanillin, but this soap I made turned an ugly tan color from even less than that. Feel free to check out the making of if you want to see what it looked like before. So that gave me an idea. What if I swap my fragrance with pure vanillin? Let's see how extreme we can push it. Surely the soap would turn black and smell like outrageously good, right? Well, there's one way to find out. Let's order some. So I paid $15 for about 100 grams of vanillin, which is more than I would ever need. The benefit is it's 90 to 99% pure and food grade, so I can control exactly how much vanillin is in my coffee. You know, priorities. I'm super curious what it's gonna smell like. I mean, it's basically what artificial vanilla extract is made of. I literally smell nothing. Well, that's anticlimactic. It smells like... Marshmallow? I'm not blown away by the smell, which is usually the first thought that enters my mind when entering a home I've never been to before. It's like sticking your face in a bag of jet puffed marshmallows. It's vaguely vanilla, but more just a generic sweet smell. Okay, well now I want to see how it tastes, because surely it has to taste like vanilla. Mmm. Ugh. It has initially like a marshmallowy flavor and then it just very quickly becomes bitter. Now that you're up to speed with what vanillin is, we can start messing around with it. Here's the game plan. I'm gonna stir up four batches of soap using my ultra white soap recipe. The formula is in the description if you wanna try it out for yourself. One batch will be the control and the other three will get a generous taste of vanillin. 6% per batch to be precise, which is about as much fragrance I would use. Vanillin batch A will have nothing added to it. Vanillin batch B will get a teaspoon of titanium dioxide because I wanna see if adding white colorant will help drive away some of that brown discoloration. And vanillin batch C will get 30 grams of vanilla color stabilizer. Vanilla color stabilizer seems to be the go-to solution for soap makers who want to use vanilla fragrances but don't want their soaps to discolor. But its reputation is seeded with doubt. Sometimes it doesn't help at all, sometimes it only helps for a few months, and sometimes it ruins the soap altogether. So I'm super curious to see what role it'll play in our vanilla soap experiment. But to get started, I'll make the control. Since this batch is really small, I'm blending it with my milk frother because the head of my stick blender is a little too voluminous. Once it reaches trace, I'll set it aside to focus on the vanillin batches. Now, there's a bit of a challenge. Vanillin has very low solubility in water. Only 1%. That's teensy tiny. Dissolving the vanillin completely would be ideal because it would permeate the soap more effectively, but to attain that 6% vanillin that I'm aiming for, I would need to use this much water. Per bar of soap. Yeah, I didn't really feel like making soap soup today. So I decided I'd dump my vanilla crystals directly into my oils and blend furiously for a couple minutes to get it as fine as possible. This part is scary because things can go downhill from here. Okay, I've been blending for probably 10 seconds and it's already poison pudding. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I guess that's something to be noted. Pure vanilla may cause soap to accelerate quickly, but that's exactly what I want and you'll learn why in a moment. I'm separating my vanilla batter into three equal batches. 
The gray spatula will get nothing, the blue spatula will get vanilla color stabilizer, and the teal spatula will get titanium dioxide. Here is my highly scientific mold. Each cavity should yield a little more than two bars of soap, and the reason I wanted the batter thick is so that the soap wouldn't accidentally bleed into the other cavities. Speaking of which, I ended up using my stick blender with the control batch after all, because it was very thin and not as emulsified as I would have liked. I give the soap a little spritz of rubbing alcohol to stave off any soda ash, and now we wait. Anything can happen at this point, especially when using an extreme amount of an untested chemical in soap. Your support makes these sorts of crazy experiments possible, and I have a lot more simmering in the back of my head, so please subscribe if you enjoy. The soap is ready to come out, and right off the bat, we've got some pretty funky colors going on. It's no surprise the pure vanilla is the darkest of the four. The one with titanium dioxide is a little lighter. It kind of looks like whole grain bread and I don't like it. Next is the vanilla color stabilizer, which seemed to yellow a bit. And then of course the control that looks whitest with a bit of soda ash in there. Even though I took the steps to prevent soda ash, <laughs> let's cut them up. For some reason, the control had a mind of its own and just designed its own swirl into itself. I'm not sure if it's soda ash because it runs all the way through the bar. Like we saw before, the stabilizer made the vanilla and soap discolor yellow slightly. It also caused some glycerin rivers, purely cosmetic, no harm to the soap done. The last two bars are essentially the same, except the left one has titanium dioxide in it, so it's lighter in color. The effect of vanilla on these bars is readily apparent. You can see that the outer edges have already started to discolor because they've been exposed to the air and have started to oxidize. Soon enough, these brown rings will darken and swallow the bars whole. The smell these bars are giving off is not tempting my taste buds. You know, they have that same vague marshmallow smell, but I have to hold the bar right up to my nose to get it. To be honest, I had higher expectations. Wow, me setting the bar high? Who would have guessed? But I was just thinking, Urgh. It's like 25 times the amount of vanillin in the most vanilla fragrance you can buy from Wholesale Supplies Plus. So surely it would smell stronger and darken more violently. Not all is lost because we still have to wait a few weeks to see how the soaps really fare. I'm gonna set up a little time lapse so we can observe the change in color over time. Well, the time lapse was a bust. I couldn't have my camera connected to power, so I had to change the battery every eight hours, and that meant the camera shifted basically every half second of the time lapse, so it looks like this. In addition, the soap is taking far longer to brown than I initially thought. I honestly thought, you know, with the amount of vanillin, this would be a quick and painless process. Even though this experiment didn't have the grandiose Eureka sort of effect I was going for, I did learn a couple things. First, the aroma. Using pure vanilla as the fragrance alone will disappoint your nose. I would guess that fragrance manufacturers use compounds and layering techniques that help carry the vanilla and help it smell stronger. I also didn't dissolve my vanilla completely and essentially just blended it to a very fine powder, so that could have had an impact on the perceived smell as well. Second, pure vanilla seems to accelerate traits. That seems to suggest that using fragrances with vanilla would be more likely to accelerate. Third, the vanilla color stabilizer does seem to help counter the brown discoloration of vanilla, although it did discolor slightly yellow on its own. There's always a chance the stabilizer will become less effective over time, so I'll post a picture on my channel's community board of all the soaps to see how they look a few months from now. Anyways, here they are side by side. The control looks the same, the vanilla with stabilizer looks the same, the vanilla with TD darkened a bit, and the vanilla with nothing else darkened even more. Oh, fascinating! There is so much to discover about soap, and I love experimenting with it. I've got another interesting idea that's far away on the horizon, and I'm really excited to test it out, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And if you want to take a look at some other experiments I've done, I'll link a playlist up above for your viewing pleasure. In any case, that was a soap journey in my soap universe. Thank you for watching. Bubble bye.